Logic Pro X has a lot of really great features, but is it right for you? Should you switch from GarageBand to Logic? Well, in today's video, I wanna take you inside Logic to show you some of the features that you unlock with Logic that you don't get inside GarageBand so that you can decide if it's right for you and your music. Welcome back to The Band Guide. I'm your band guy, Colin. And before we get into the features that you unlock with Logic Pro, I want to highlight something to you. What you're not going to hear in this list of features is anything that just automatically makes your music sound better. The reality is there's nothing in Logic that just inherently makes your music sound better. If you're struggling to get your music to sound good, to get it to sound professional, it's way less about what you have than how you use whatever it is you have. So how you mix in GarageBand is more important than just having Logic, if that makes sense. So I put together something to help you with this, and it's completely free. It's a six step checklist to a pro mix and just walks through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how you can do them inside GarageBand or Logic. So even if you decide to switch to Logic, this is still gonna help you out. It's completely free from the link in the description below, so be sure to pick it up. But let's start looking at some features. Now we're gonna be quickly going through 22 of what I consider to be Logic Pro's biggest features that you don't get inside GarageBand. Now, and I broadly think of these in four main categories. The first category is features that allow us to work faster. The second is features that allow us to work in huge sessions, sessions with a lot of tracks, like a lot of vocals or drums or 20 guitars or whatever. The third is uh, working across multiple songs at the same time. So if you're working on an album or an EP, features that help you work across multiple different songs. And then the fourth is just kind of advanced or cool tools. Now, this is definitely not a totally comprehensive list of every feature that you get in Logic that you don't have in GarageBand, but it's the 22 that I think are the most important. I feel like 22 was probably enough for you to make up your mind. And finally, in my opinion, I think there's three groups of people who likely should switch to Logic and three groups of people who definitely don't need to switch to Logic if they don't want to. But we'll save that and I'll get to that at the end. For now, let's go and jump into the features starting with buses. Buses are essentially just a way for you to route audio to different places. This sounds complicated and annoying, but in reality, it's not actually that difficult and it's really, really powerful. So a bus allows you to send a track or tracks to a separate track that you can process differently. This is really, really helpful if you wanna create one reverb sound that you send a lot of tracks to, or one delay sound that you send a lot of tracks to, and you can process that track. Now we do actually have buses built into GarageBand, the master echo, master reverb, the ambience and the reverb knobs, those are all technically buses, but you're limited in how much control you get over them. With Logic, it's completely unlimited. You can do whatever you want with these buses. If you wanna have a chorus bus where you just send things that you wanna have a little chorus on them, you can do that. It's a really, really cool, powerful tool that you don't get with GarageBand, at least not as unlimited as it is in Logic. The second is track stacks, or what I like to call folders. Track stacks or folders is a way that you can just group tracks that go together into one place and you can actually collapse it down. And you can even go further and process all those tracks in one place. So you could put all of your drums together into one track stack and then EQ and compress all of your drum sounds together in one place or all of your guitars or all of your vocals. This can be really, really helpful both for organization because you can fold up these folders and make your session easier to move around in, but also for mixing because you can process a bunch of tracks in one place that's not just your master track that's processing your whole song. The third feature is multiple views. So in GarageBand, you're really limited to just the one screen. In Logic, there's actually three different ways that you can view your screen. You can have just your basic editor window where you're seeing all of your regions. You can look at your editor window with a little mixer window underneath it, or you can look at a whole separate mixer window where you've seen all of your faders and your processing in one place. The fourth feature is the ability to group tracks. This is something that's really important if you're recording multiple microphones at one time. So for example, if you're recording drums and you have 10, 12, 14 microphones around a drum kit, even four microphones around a drum kit, you can group them all together and have it where when you edit them, they stay together so they never get nudged off of each other and you start having weird sound issues because they should all be moving at the exact same time. This is really, really helpful for any sort of editing. But again, this is only really important if you're recording multiple multiple microphones or sources at the same time. Fifth, we have clip gain. This is where you can affect the volume of the actual region of audio that you're seeing. So you can turn up something that was recorded too quiet or turn down something that was recorded too loud. And it's particularly helpful where if in one recording, you're too loud over here and too quiet over there, you can use clip gain to balance the volume between those sections. And if you're using 10.7.5 and beyond, one of the more recent versions of Logic, you can actually do this with your editing tools, which is actually number six. 
editing tools. So editing tools functionally just make your cursor into a specific editing tool. So if you have the clip gain editing tool selected, you can just select a region and pull up and it's gonna turn that flame up or turn it down. There's a whole bunch of editing tools. I can't go through all of them, but a couple cool ones, the marquee tool, if I select a region, it will loop it, or I can just hit delete, it will delete whatever I've selected with the marquee tool, or the mute editing tool. If I just click a region, it will mute that region, which actually brings me to number seven, which is region mute. Region mute is just where you can mute just a region of audio. So instead of just muting the whole track or deleting, which is the only way to get rid of a small section of audio before, you can now mute just a region. So this is helpful if, let's say, you just have a guitar idea, you don't know that it's going to work in the song, you could record it, but then mute it, and you could always come back to it if you want it. You don't have to have it on a separate track, all that stuff. Not make or break, but just kind of cool. Number eight, we have fades and crossfades. This is where we can fade in a region or fade out a region. Or if you have two regions butted up against each other, you can cross fade them to make sure it's a smooth transition between them. This can really help if you're comping together a guitar performance or a vocal performance or drum edit where you just need it to be a little bit smoother. When you do a hard edit, it's just kind of clicking or popping. It's just not working right. A crossfade can fix that nine times out of ten. Ninth, we have slow down and speed up crossfades. If you've ever heard that barrel sound effect in a song, this is one way to do that. This isn't great if you're trying to do it to your whole song, but if you just have a region or a couple of regions that you're trying to do it on, this is such a cool, easy, quick way that you can do it inside Logic. Tenth, we have Flex Pitch. Flex Pitch is crazy. This is like one of the best things in Logic, in my opinion. This is functionally Melodyne or any other vocal tuning software built into Logic. Now, there are ways to do things like this inside GarageBand with third-party plugins that you do have to pay for, like Waves Tune or uh, Plugin Alliance has one called Crispy Tuner, I think. Those are fairly affordable. But the idea here is that you can just slightly tune your vocals in a much more natural sounding way, and it's a graphical interface, so you get a lot of control making sure that you're hitting the exact right note and that all your vocals are playing well together. 11th, we have Bounce in Place. This is where you can bounce a track in place. So basically you can just bake the processing in on it. So if it's a MIDI track and you just want to see an audio track, you can do that with bounce in place. Or if you've done a bunch of vocal tuning and you just want to bounce it in place so you're not using all that CPU processing, you can bounce it in place. It's really, really helpful for that. Or if you've done like a telephone effect and you just want that to be baked onto the track itself, you can do that. Twelfth, we have copy and paste plugins across tracks. And there's two ways to do this. You can just option click and drag plugins across tracks, or you can actually copy all the plugins and paste all the plugins onto another track. This is really helpful if you have a bunch of vocal tracks that are all recorded exactly the same way and you want them all to be processed exactly the same way. You can just set them once and then copy and paste all those settings to multiple tracks. It really speeds up workflow. Speaking of speeding up workflow, number 13, import session data is another great way to speed up your workflow. With importing session data, you can take something you've mixed in a previous song and import that same processing into your new song. So if you have a vocal sound that you really loved in one song, if you've recorded the vocals the same way, you could import the processing that you did on that vocal onto this vocal in this new song you're working on. Or if you want the master track processing to be exactly the same. Or if you have a drum sound that you really love that you created in one mix and want to use it on your next mix, you can import all of that session data. That's a really powerful trick. And that on steroids is number 14, which is templates. Imagine a song that has everything you set up to mix the song, but none of the actual song in it. That's functionally a template. That way you can start every new song with everything that you use that you know you like when you're mixing to make sure that it sounds really coherent and consistent. So you could have a template for every album that you work on to make sure that you're always kind of processing them similarly. Similar reverb, similar effects, similar EQs, all that stuff. Similar master track processing. You could all have that baked into a template where it's ready to go. It can really speed up, again, the workflow. Number 15 is producer kits. This is functionally like GarageBand Drummer, but instead of being one track, it's split out across all the different pieces of a drum kit. So you have kick drum, snare drum, toms, overheads, rooms, all of that stuff automatically split out for you. Now this is not make or break. You can do something very similar in GarageBand like the Make GarageBand Drum Sound Real Guide that I put together. I'll link to a video series that goes through that up there. That can give you a very similar effect, but in Logic it does it automatically for you. So producer kits. Number 16 is advanced metering, which is how you tell how loud you're recording, how loud you're mixing, how loud you're mastering, your final song is going to sound. And GarageBand doesn't have any advanced metering built into it. You just have kind of like the green, yellow, red lines, but you can't tell exactly what they're doing. 
You can make up for this in GarageBand with Envy Meter 2 or Ulean Loudness Meters, which are free plugins. You can download them and use them in GarageBand, but Logic has advanced metering built into it automatically. Number 17, visuals on your compressor. Compression is one of the most important tools when mixing. EQ and compression are like the two most important tools when mixing. And the compressor built into GarageBand doesn't show you any visuals. You can't see how much compression is happening. So it's a little harder to really know exactly what you're doing with that compression. Whereas the Logic compressor, you see exactly how much compression is happening in just the stock Logic compressor. That said, you can get past this in GarageBand by downloading some third-party plugins like Analog Obsessions Free Compressors or Klanghelm has a couple or there's other free compressors out there that do give you that visual. So this isn't just Logic, but again, it's built into Logic. And number 18, speaking of compression, is side chaining. Now, there's a few uses of side chaining, but the most common is with compression. And the way that you might do this is you might have a compressor that you set on a bass track, but you have that compressor compressor listen to the kick drum. That's what's called side chaining. So the side chain is that compressor listening to something else. So every time that kick drum hit, it turns the bass down. That lets the kick drum pump through a little bit more. It can give it a ducking effect on the bass. This is something that a lot of people love to talk about because it's a cool trick that makes sense, but you don't actually need to do this 90% of the time. Unless you're working in a very specific genre or you have a very specific problem you're trying to work past, I actually would say I might side chain in 10% of my mixes. So this is not make or break, but you cannot do it inside GarageBand. So if you need to side chain for some reason, you have to get logic. Number 19 is the ability to use external controllers. So this would be something specifically like a fader port where you have a fader that you can adjust or multiple faders that you can adjust or any sort of transport controls where you can start and stop and record with physical buttons out in the world. GarageBand doesn't allow you to use any of that. So if you want to, you gotta get logic. Number 20, is the ability to write automation with a fader or with a plugin. So if you want to have a plugin do a specific thing at a certain time, you can just click and move or change that variable on that plugin in real time and it will record it as automation in Logic. You can't do that in GarageBand. Same with a fader. If you want to have a fader come up at certain points, you can just switch it to latch mode and anytime you adjust that fader, it will write in automation. Pretty cool, can definitely save some time and lead to some more advanced automation. Number 21, buffer size. Now we're getting into some kind of boring stuff, I'm not gonna lie, but this is actually really helpful. So if you have a lot of issues where your computer can't keep up with all the processing system overload, or you have a lot of latency, buffer size can help with that. So with buffer size, if you reduce the buffer size in your settings, that's gonna help you have less latency. If you increase it, that's gonna help it run all the different plugins and all the different processing that you wanna do. You're still gonna be limited based on how powerful your computer is, but this can kind of help with latency and with computer processing. And finally, number 22, being able to record and mix at higher sample rates and bit depths. Now, sample rate and bit depth is a complicated kind of nerdy topic. In short, it's kind of like the resolution and headroom of your mix. This sounds really important, being able to do that a higher number, bigger is better, sounds great, but the reality is it really doesn't matter that much. It is a very, 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 very subtle difference that you might get when you record at a higher sample rate. And in terms of bit depth, the standard right now is 24-bit, which you can do in GarageBand. Technically, Logic does give you 32-bit, which is helpful, but 24-bit is totally fine and is currently kind of still the industry standard. GarageBand defaults to 44.1, which is totally fine. Almost rec every record you've ever heard has been done in 44.1. There's nothing wrong with 44.1. Yes, you get some different resolution and some aliasing benefits when you go up to higher sample rates. This is too complicated. It doesn't matter for this video. All I want you to take away from this is that if you're going to be collaborating with other people and they are definitely going to be recording at higher sample rates and are not willing to go down to 44.1, then yeah, maybe you got to go up to... But even so, it's just going to convert the file. It's fine. It's really not that big of a deal, guys. So yes, it matters, but honestly, it also kind of doesn't matter. So that's number 22. That's it. Okay, 22 things about logic. What do you think you should do? Having heard this, or is there anything in here that you can't live without? If there's anything that you can't live without, maybe switch up. But you don't have to. I wanna be really, really clear about that. Everything that you need, you can do inside GarageBand. That said, there are three groups of people that I think could really benefit from switching up to logic. And it really is, first and foremost, if you're recording anything with multiple mics on a source like drums, or you're doing two mics on a guitar or something like that, you I really recommend getting Logic. Just being able to group tracks together is helpful enough. That alone worth its weight in gold. 
The second group is people who are working on huge sessions, specifically with a lot of vocals, because you get flex pitch built in, you get all these tools that help you process multiple tracks faster, group them and make them smaller, fold them up into a, a track stack or folder. That's really, really helpful. And then the third is people who are making a lot of music, specifically working across multiple songs on one album or EP. If you're working on a lot of music, it's faster working GarageBand. And if you're working on a, a longer album, then being able to pull in things from different mixes or make a template, all those things can help you when you're working on multiple songs. That said, it's not make or break. If you're just starting out and you're just getting the ropes of it, like GarageBand is totally fine. So there are three groups that I think really don't need to switch. The first is if you're just starting out. If you're just getting the hang of it, you don't need to switch. It really is fine. GarageBand has everything you need to get the fundamentals. And I would encourage you, instead of worrying about going to Logic, focusing on uh, the Ultimate GarageBand Beginner's Guide video series that I did, really learning the fundamentals and maybe getting a course, maybe getting a little more in depth and really understanding the process. Because again, how you use what you have is gonna be way more impactful than just getting the more expensive, more technically advanced thing. The second group is people who are only ever working on small sessions. If you're only ever working on small sessions, there are very few features in Logic that would be drastically impactful to you. Again, flex pitch, there's little things here and there that can make it really helpful. I'm still gonna mix a small session in, garage, in Logic, but I could do it in GarageBand and there's not much that I'd be missing. And then the third and final is people are just trying to save as much money as possible. If, if you don't wanna spend the money, you don't need to spend that money. And I guess I'd throw on fourth is if you just don't want to. There's no reason that you need to feel like you should. There's nothing about GarageBand that's inherently going to hold your music back. And no matter which one of these six, kind of seven groups you fall into, that six step checklist to a pro mix is really gonna help you out. It's completely free from link in the description below. It walks through six steps that all professional mixes have, how you can do them inside GarageBand or Logic. So wherever it is that you end up making music, it's gonna help you out. So be sure to pick it up. It's completely free from link in the description below. Before you go, I have a couple of questions I'd love to hear from you. One, what do you think you want to do? Do you think you want to switch to Logic or do you think you're fine continuing to work in GarageBand? Now that you've kind of seen all the behind the scenes, what do you think? Two, which one of these is most interesting to you? Do, are there any that you want me to do a video on? Let me know in the comments below. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video. One thing at a time.